a robot arm moves so that P travels in a circle about B, which is not moving. Knowing that P starts from rest, let's highlight that, and its speed increases at a constant, so we'll highlight that, rate of 10 mils per second squared, determine the magnitude of the acceleration when t equals 4 seconds, and the time for the magnitude of acceleration to be 80 mils per second squared. Okay, cool. So we have this point P over here, and it's traveling in a circle about B. And if it's traveling in a circular motion, then we're going to have, and we have it, um, for it to travel in a circular motion, we're having the acceleration tangent acceleration, right? Acceleration that is tangent to its movement, AT. Then we also need an acceleration that is pointing to the center, right? So that this guy does not uh, fly off to the tangent direction, right? So for it to keep on that circular path, we always need that acceleration to be pointing to the center, keeping it in its original route. And this is what we call the centripetal acceleration. Now, its speed increases at a constant rate, as said here. Okay, So that means that our tangent acceleration is constant. It is 10 mils per second squared. And this is a constant, according to the problem. Because it's starting for rest, I don't think we know that it's a velocity at point P. So the velocity not of P is 0. Right? So there's no velocity when time equals 0. Um, what is the centripetal acceleration? If you guys recall, Centripetal acceleration comes from the centripetal force, right? Because we need a force to have an acceleration. The centripetal force is mass times the velocity squared over 2. And if we apply Newton's law, second law, which just says that mass equals force times acceleration, then we can combine these two, and we're going to have that the mass times the centripetal acceleration has to be equal to the mass velocity squared over, um, excuse me, not 2, r. r as in the radius, right? So this would be this guy here. The radius, right? Um, we're going, we're going the radius. Okay, so we have mass on both sides. So that means that centripetal acceleration equals velocity squared over the radius. Important to note, this means that the let me, let's write it down here in red. This means that the centripetal acceleration, we'll do this. The centripetal acceleration is a function of the velocity, right? But we know velocity is a function of time, right? Because we know velocity is how the position changes with time, right? So it's a function of time. So therefore. This means, and because, because the velocity is a function of time, therefore the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration is also a function of time. Okay, so we have two accelerations. One of them is constant at 10 meters per second squared. The other one is a function of velocity, which is a function of time. Okay, so if we want to know, um, part A is asking us what is the magnitude of acceleration. If we want to know what is the resulting acceleration of these two here, we need to combine the two, right? So we're decomposing the tangent here and the centripetal here, and this is going to give us an acceleration that is a combination of the two of them. Okay, so the magnitude of just put a m here for magnitude is a combination of um, the tangent one and the centripetal one. And because of Pythagoras, we know that this is just going to be square root of tangent square plus centripetal square. Okay, so if you want to know that, that's what a is asking us for. We just need to know both. This one is a constant, so we know this one at any given time, but this one varies with time. So depending on the time that we're looking for, it's going to have a different value. And in this problem here, they say that we want a time of four seconds. Okay, so our game plan is let's find what is the velocity at time equals four seconds. Once we have the velocity, we find what is the uh, centripetal acceleration at time equals 4 seconds. And when we have that, we calculate the magnitude of the acceleration component. Okay, so let's start with part A. What is the velocity? What is the velocity when um, at time equals 4 seconds? Well, we know the velocity is how the you know, acceleration is how the velocity is changing with time. Right, so therefore, a t d t equals d v, and I can integrate that from 0 to 4 seconds, which is what we're looking for, and here we're going to from v naught to our v uh, at 4 that we're looking for. Okay, so this is going to give us a t times 4 minus 0 has to be equal to v at 4 minus v naught. So v naught is nil, so therefore my v in times 4 seconds is just 4 times my centripetal acceleration, which is 10 meters per mils per second squared, and the time second. So this turned out to be 40 mils per second. We have 40 mils per second as a velocity when time equals 4 seconds. Cool. What else? With that, now we can find our centripetal acceleration, right? Centripetal acceleration, we know is a function of velocity, and it's velocity squared over the radius. So this would be 40 squared. It's going to give us meters squared per second squared, divided by the radius, and the radius, if we get uh, 0.8. Uh, meters, right? So for the units to make sense, we have, need to have that in mils. So that we can cancel out, this is also mils. Um, and so 0.8 times 1,000 is 800, so 800 mils. And we're going to have this, 
t equals 2, right? So we get 2 here, 2 meters per second squared. That is the uh, magnitude of the centripetal acceleration at t equals 4. Right? And don't forget that this is at t equals 4. I'm actually just going to star for us this. This is at t equals 4 seconds. Cool. So if you want the magnitude at t equals 4, the magnitude is just going to be the square root of ac squared plus at squared. Um, AC is 2, so 2. AT is 10. They have the same unit, so we can sum them up. Note that the influence of the tangent acceleration is going to be much greater. Right, so we should have something, we should expect something out of this square root to be closer to 10 than to 2. And we get 10.2 actually, so way closer to 10, right? Cool, so this is the answer for part A. It's asking us what is the magnitude of the acceleration component when time equals 4 seconds. What does part B ask us for, or is it? Okay, so let's just draw quickly here what we just found out. We just found out that at t equals, we do that, we found out that at t equals 4 seconds, the tangent 1 is greater, so we do this. Okay, so this will be our tangent 1 and our centripetal 1 is smaller, right? So that means that our am would be something like this. But that's what we have in situation at t equals 4. Just know that if we increase our time, let's say if we go to time equals 20 seconds, okay, 20 seconds, our at remains the same um, 10, right? However, our centripetal acceleration would have increased. And at that point, we would probably have something like this would be way greater than this one. The magnitude of the thing would look something like this. All right, but just, just bring the extra thought into the solving of the question. Okay, uh, B, the time for the magnitude of the acceleration to be 80 mils Per second squared. Okay, so 80 mils per second squared. So we want the magnitude, so we want this guy here to be 80 mils per second squared. Um, we know that, okay, cool. So we know that this guy's not going to change regardless of the time, and they're giving us this. So with those two, we can find this fellow. And if we find that fellow, we can reverse what we did on part A, so we can find the velocity, and with the velocity, we can find the time. So that will be our game plan. All right, so let's, we can actually copy this if you want to. Just take it down with us to use it. Okay, so let's solve part B. So part B. Okay, so we were given that the magnitude of the acceleration is 80, okay, so 80 mils per second squared. And we know that that has to be equal to the square root of AT, and we know AT to be 10, because it's a constant, and then AC. Okay, so therefore we can find AC by trivial here. Um, AC is just 30 square root of 7, and obviously has the same unit as the other two. And with that we can find a velocity, right, because remember that AC, centripetal acceleration is the velocity squared divided by the radius. So if we want the velocity, just to centripetal times the radius, we take the square root of that. We have all these fellows, so this is 30 square root of 7 times, uh, what was it, 800 mils. Unit wise, we have mils per second squared over here. We multiply that by uh, mils. So we're taking the square, square root of mils squared per second squared. Square root of that, square root of that. This is just going to be mils per second. So I have about 252 mils per second. And with that, we can finally find the time, right? Because that's what we're after for the whole, the whole time. We're just chasing the time. We know that the acceleration, sorry, the acceleration is how velocity is changing with time. So therefore, at dt has to be equal to dt. We're going to do the same process we did before, except this time we're going from zero to the time that we're looking for. And over here, we're going from v naught, which we know is 0, to v that we just found to be 252. Let me just make this a bit bigger. So we're going from v naught, which is 0. Let's go ahead and put 0. And we're going to 252 over here. All right, so what's going on here? The, this is constant, so it's out of integral. So we have at times t minus 0 has to be equal to uh, 252 minus 0. So therefore, t equals 252 divided by at, which is 10. Uh, Unit-wise, this is mils per second, and on the bottom here we have mils per second squared. So thankfully this is left in seconds, which is what we would expect, and that is obviously just 25.2 seconds. So it takes 25.2 seconds for the magnitude of the acceleration, which is a combination of both centripetal and tangent uh, acceleration, to be uh, 80, right? Yeah, 80 mils per second squared. But at the same time, after the uh, 25 seconds, our velocity is 252. Okay, so remember that. We actually did that little example before, and I said the time could be 20 seconds, and our, our centripetal acceleration would be greater than the uh, tangent one, so it's, this is a good case of it. If you have questions, let me know.